Welcome. It's today in EVE Online, September 23rd, 2019. We are Talking In Stations. If you want to come by, just drop into Talking In Stations Discord. You can find that through talkinginstations.com. Okay, today we're going to do some exploration of what it is to play EVE Online. Uh, that'll be the fun bit. Uh, we do have some news to cover, and we'll try to cover that first. But I need to look around to see. I think over the weekend we've covered some... I'm trying to think. So Friday was the last time that we had this program. And since then we had the Sunday show with uh, Carneros hosting um, Kith from Bastion. He's an FC. And... Sphinx from Horde, I believe, who's also an FC. And uh, that was an interesting discussion, very informative, very very news-driven, very reality-based. Uh, and then at the end, we got into some discussion about the state of affairs and EVE Online. I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, so check out that show that's Talking In Stations Sunday. Uh, and then there was a really... Good thing that happened after that, there was a massive discussion about um, the game and its state right afterwards. Um, after every show, the people who were on the show kind of pile into our public chat, and we have a bit of an open forum so that people who had questions can come in and participate. And that's worked out really well for us over time. Oh, I know. Saturday was a big deal for us because Talking Stations, the group, had a meeting. We have it only 90, every 90 days, so four times a year. It's a check-in to see where we're at, where we're going. And uh, right before that, and this is news for people, uh, the, uh, we had um, a, recruiting, a recruiting announcement, which you can see at TIS Discord, in the pings section. Now, normally we don't recruit openly like that because it's just too hard to sift through who's useful and who's not. We've done it maybe once before, but this time uh, we I, I put it out there because I, I, I need to expand this, the station to do more stuff and to have more people involved and to, to make it more of a collective, which is what we want to do, and less of a, a one-man show. So what what's happened is that when I put it out there, I got some really good responses from people that I respect highly. And um, I invited some of them to the actual meeting that we had on Saturday. And while we were doing the meeting, we were going through at the beginning, we give out all the statistics about uh, how we're doing and everything, of course, is going up and up and up and up. Everything's great. And everything's moving fast. Uh, it's almost a little too fast. We almost have too much content coming at you and all that kind of stuff. And so there wasn't much bad news in there. Uh, but what we couldn't determine with all that good news was what are our what they call KPI, our key um, performance indicators. And the performance indicators are basically like, how do you measure that you're going in the right direction? What are your goals and are, are you meeting them? And if it was just growth in numbers, then we're doing okay. But that's not always what you want. You either want, say, more uh, money being brought in if you're a business, or you want a growth in the in the target sector, or you want um, certain indicators that you're being uh, acknowledged by the right kind of people that you want to, or that sort of stuff. Yeah, so when we were looking at that, we're like, you know, all this time we've just really grown. We really haven't thought about what we want out of uh, talking in stations. What do you guys want? Like, what do we think you want? So occasionally we send out a survey, but it's really just to the people that we can reach, and therefore it's kind of a bias. It's a confirmation of people getting what they want, and that's why they're there. So uh, so the point is, we need to know from you guys like what you like, what you don't like, what you want, what, what, we're, what we're not doing that you would want. These kinds of things help us to like figure out uh, what to do. I strongly believe there's a lot of lurkers who are silent and... Um, and then there's the people who talk all the time. We hear from the people who talk all the time. We want to hear from the silent people, even if it's quietly. So you can direct message me on Discord if you want. 
and uh, let us know the kind of stuff that you want. Um, but in that discussion of what we really want to do, what are our performance indicators? Uh, at the <laughs> at the end of the meeting, I thought we have a whole lot of great new recruits, like s- some fantastic people. I won't name names because I'll leave people out, but I was really really happy with the uh, results that we got. And I thought, well, there's a key performance indicator. We're attracting we're attracting people that are willing to do this when with a lot of uh, with a lot of optimism. And so that was. To me, that was a real sign that we're on to something. Like that's uh, Saturday confirmed something that I had suspected, but wasn't always sure that we've we've collected a lot of really good people, and we still have the potential to collect a lot of really good people. And it's kind of funny because it mirrors what Hilmar was saying about Eve Online. They still have the potential to collect people. That this isn't dead yet, you know. Like that's kind of what it feels like. It's like, hey, this is this is definitely good. We're we're reaching the right people. So. Hey, Delana. Uh, so look for new faces at Talking In Stations and look for uh, new, I don't know what you'd call them, services or opportunities to get information about the game. And not just in a capacity of news for veteran players, but uh, we want to start to serve um, players that don't know the game that well. Even not just the medium players that are hungry, but the players that are kind of trying to get their feet. We may start going more in that direction for a few programs. And even um, and even people who don't play EVE Online to try to tell their stories about EVE Online in parallel to the real world. To attract attention to the game for people who are kind of on the fence about playing it. And so here's a good question from Rezix. What do I consider a new player? And that's a good question because I think that is a movable target. If you ask somebody who's been here three years, they would say, well, somebody who's playing less than six months. If you ask somebody who's been playing 15 years, a new player to them is somebody who's played six years. Uh, Because they came in, because they can map where this person came in. Oh, this guy came in after Incarna. Well, he doesn't know the whole first uh, eight years of uh, EVE Online. So... That's not necessarily a new guy, but I think new guy is this term that just moves around a lot. And what I've recognized is that people don't take on EVE Online until they're ready to play a really tough game. So you have a lot of people who are coming who are very prepared for EVE Online. They're, they're people who've mastered other MMOs, and um, now they want one that's uh, a sandbox and hard to master. And so those those guys that are new bros are really... Highly motivated, highly intelligent players too, so you can't really discount them as uh, as people who need to be talked down to. It's more about demystifying. So when you communicate to a new player, it's more about demystifying some of the stuff that is um, just concepts that they wouldn't be familiar with. Uh, the inventory concept in Eve is a bit different than it is in other games, except Plex. Plex kind of works like inventory in other MMOs, but there's all kinds of things about uh, just m- movement in space is difficult to understand if, you know, people want to actively move their character, but you don't in EVE. You give it coordinates, you double click and let it run, and you move in that direction until you double click again somewhere else, or you hit command space bar. I'm on Mac, so that's command. Uh, and so the, the point is there's concepts they don't get. That's the kind of stuff we want to break down for them to make their learning curve a little bit quicker. Uh, so Lone Gamer says, anyone three years constant and under is new to me. So anybody see, so Lone is saying what I uh, had thought, and that is that if you're less than three years, you're considered kind of a new bro. And like I said, people have different learning speeds, so it's hard to say somebody in six months doesn't quite get it, um, because they might, because they're very seasoned. Yeah, and... Um, yeah, if you're excited to see uh, Carneros on Talking Stations, he's going to be doing a lot of the hosting, which is great. He's really good at it. He just adds so much structure to the show that uh, has kind of been missing. So Carneros will be doing a lot more of that. And I'll be there too, more of as a panelist. I tried engineering this uh, week and it didn't it didn't go great, but it went weird. <laughs> and weird is good. Weird is different. And um, 
it just looked like a different show and it performed like a different show. Uh, and I was, I was actually pleased with it, not just because I was doing it, but because, because it looks, it looked, uh, different. Things were more dynamic moving around and stuff. But yeah, yesterday or Sunday really taught us how important McLeod is once again to the process of producing the show, putting up graphics and circling things for you and that sort of stuff. So yeah, there's that. All right, as long as we're talking about new bros, there's a video out on Twitter here that we'll just go ahead and play. And this is from uh, Eve Online actually put this out, which means it's getting a lot of attention. And we'll go ahead and play it here so you can see it. Or should I do this into... Let's see, I'll try to get it to be bigger and that way you can see more of it. But I think it's the audio that you really want to catch. Ugh, except YouTube gives you commercials. Goodbye, YouTube. I know, I know. To explain a game like Eve in five minutes seems like an impossible challenge. After all, I've been playing for over seven years and I still don't understand many aspects of this game. And really that about sums it up. Eve is unlike any game there is. Well first, the nuts and bolts. Eve is a massive multiplayer online sandbox game where all gameplay takes place on a single server instance. In other words, unlike most other MMOs, all the thousands of players who are logged in share the same universe and can potentially interact with each other. Purely on the technical level, this is uh, fairly difficult, and it does require a massively powerful and advanced server system. The setting is 21,000 years in the future in a distant star cluster called New Eden. Gameplay takes place in several thousand star systems within this cluster. Interstellar travel is possible through jump gates that link all of the systems together. It's also possible through wormholes or sometimes jump drives that are used only by huge capital ships. As far as we know, there are no aliens in EVE, just many factions of humans, only some of which would be hardly recognizable as such any longer. The players are called Capsuleers, which are specially selected humans who can link their consciousness into a starship. They pretty much become one with the ship, which gives them great advantages over a ship with the standard crew. Capsuleers are also virtually immortal. They always have at least one fresh clone available, so that if they die their consciousness is transferred to the clone and they are resurrected. A lot like the Cylons on Battlestar Galactica. Many people sum up the game by calling it Internet Spaceships. There are literally hundreds of different ship classes that a Capsuleer could fly, depending on their clone skill levels, and whether they can afford it. The ships range from small frigates to super capital ships, but also include transports, freighters, and mining barges. Players can also deploy massive space stations to have a number of different uses. Now sandbox means there is no end game or way to win. You are free to define yourself or make your own goals, which may be to simply mine an asteroid belt and watch YouTube, or be an ambitious masochist and lead an alliance of thousands of players in an attempt to exert major influence over the player-driven universe. There is no other game that will make you feel emotionally the way EVE does. This has to do with three major commodities that drive and motivate everyone. The first is money and stuff. Making in-game ISK or money can be done in endless ways. Most are benign, like mining, per, uh, machining, and manufacturing, unit. things that Care Bears do. A few are ruthless towards other players. Yes, all your money and materials, your sovereign space, can be stolen, looted, or bamboozled away. Unlike in other games, once those items are gone, they're gone for good. It's time to either cry, rage quit, move on, or get even. The second great commodity is time. It honestly does take a lot of time to train skills, accrue wealth, build things, mine things, as well as create and maintain a corporation or alliance if you're in that kind of role. This is not a game for the impatient that are seeking instant gratification. And all the time and effort you put into an in-game goal can be ruined in no time at all. Perhaps your fancy industrial ship is caught by people you're at war with and destroyed. Perhaps your station is assaulted. Maybe you were scammed out of a lot of stuff. Maybe your alliance or corp falls apart or is forced to retreat from their space. Which leads to the third commodity. The third commodity is reputation. This comes from knowledge of the game or competence, leadership skills, notoriety, in-game fame, and several other things. 
I find in my own experience, well-known players struggle internally with their sense of reputation and pride more than how the community ultimately views them. When players feel their reputation is damaged, they often rage quit, demotivate, or abandon their lofty in-game goals to pursue other ones. These three elements, material wealth, time, and reputation, create a cocktail that makes players feel that there is something large at stake. Some large machinations are going on which you, the player, either directly or indirectly are a part of. We've also taken the word EVE to mean everyone versus everyone. True, EVE is not a competitive game in the sense that it is understood your goal is to defeat your opponent, but competition in some form is almost impossible to avoid. Player versus player or PvP gameplay takes place not just in space battles against enemy combatants, but on the EVE market, recruiting others to your cause, holding territory or space stations, and even in culture wars such as the mining community versus the ganking community. In EVE, you are sharing a living, breathing universe with other players where enemies, rivals, allies, and especially genuine camaraderies are forged so that you may overcome the challenges together. Thank you for watching Space Friends, and if you're a uh, combat oriented. Alright, so that's the video EVE Online Explained in Five Minutes by Resurrected Starships. Check it out, it's got 10,000 views already. CCP tweeted it out, uh, so I expect that to get a lot more. There's a second video I'm not going to show you because it's 30 minutes long, but it is so good. I'll call it out in just a second. First, I want to uh, say hello to Ash Dorothy. How's it going, Ash? Hey, how's it going? It's been a, it's a good morning. Yeah, get you to the right volume. Um, yeah, it's going pretty good. I was just talking about our Saturday meeting and how that went and how we got some really cool new recruits. And they keep coming. What's new with you? Uh, just trying to get my son ready for school and... Uh... Uh, we've got a lot of people really excited about the emergent conduit, so people are selling me the their salvage from from runs of that, and I bought myself a new Gila for the abyss runs because zero point condensate keeps going up and up. <laughs> oh, is that uh, zero point condensate? Let's check that out. That is, yeah, that is loot from. It's loot from the abyss. Um, specifically, it drops the most in firestorms, exotics, and mo uh, you know uh, electricals drop both ISO and um, zero point. Um, but either way, uh, zero point has gone from sixty-eight mil thousand per unit like four days ago to one hundred and ten thousand per unit now. Wow. Yeah, 111 actually, and climbing quickly. How much do people buy at a time? Uh, well, I mean, like it's a primary construction material mm. for Triglavian equipment. So, let me let me pull, let me get to you some numbers on that. Yeah, because it's only like bundles of a thousand. Uh, well, I would say bundles of average, like two to three thousand. So kind of short supply and with the price going up yeah check out that spike so pretty good yeah all right well we wait uh, this this is kind of the eve coffee club if you're like me on the pacific coast um of course europe's already like getting close to getting off work and having dinner time. But uh, the U.S. market uh, is either at lunch on the East Coast or having breakfast on the West Coast. So if you're part of the West Coast, cheers with your coffee. I drink crappy instant decaf just because. <laughs> I don't know why. I think it reminds me of a, a diner somewhere out in the desert. Um, but yeah, so that's what I'm drinking right now. Uh, yes, we've uh, merchandise from Talking in Station. We've thought about it. We want to do it. Uh, we There are ways to do it where you can order yourself the item that you want. And that's not a bad way to go because we really just want you guys to have the things you want. Um, the other ways that are more quality controlled, I think, you order the materials yourself and then you distribute them. And I just don't want to get into that. We don't have 
we don't have enough people to do that sort of thing. Uh, it just becomes a big pain. I could travel to E-Vegas and hand out mugs, but I have to carry a box of mugs uh, in the car along with everybody <laughs> else's luggage. So that's a problem. Handing out T-shirts, well, that's fine too, but people only use them to work out. And we thought of handing out well, nice shirts, uh, but that's expensive and it would only go to a few people, I guess. Streamlabs, though, has some some uh, things that allows you to basically very easily make a merch system for your stream. I've been meaning to look into that myself. Yeah. Um, but so the Drekovic, for example, takes a little over 500 zero point. Oh, wow. So that's and not... uh, the Lashak is over 800. So like one of these, like, okay, so this is going for 112,000. Uh, and there's about a thousand, so that's two Dracovics, right? So I mean, this is under this whole first section here of the market is under twenty Dracovics. Uh, so yeah, mm -hmm. this this is going to continue to go up. That's a that's a bottleneck. Yep. So if you look at the value of that over time, and then look at the value of the Dracovic, then look at the value of the Dracovic blueprint. Unfortunately, we don't see history of that. I'll just say that. The last price that I was buying Drekovic blueprints at was twenty uh, million per, and I usually give a slightly favorable um, margin because I'm trying to be nice to the people that I have that are running these things um, uh, to encourage them to do it. But now it's at thirty thirty million or more, um, and I'm I just I can't I'm not going to buy it at that, that rate. But the Drekovics themselves have also gone up. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think Kiki's, I mean, Kiki's have remained pretty stable. They've been in high demand for a very long time. Um, but you're also going to see a dip in the salvage and actually a dip in things like Icky Tursus. Yeah. Why is that? Uh, I think it's because, so what I think has happened is uh, there's been an influx in salvage thanks to, um, thanks to, the emergent conduits and such, right? So once the as soon as the emergent conduits came out, uh, came out really well. There's invasion itself. Start was already ca causing this problem, but once the emergent conduits came out, you see this giant drop or well, a huge in uh, increase in market transactions uh, with a drop of price for all of the salvage. So what I see is is that a lot of people just sold off their salvage to whoever was buying at the time or whatever which plunges the price but it makes it so that now everybody has the salvage in order to build t2 stuff so they're building t2 stuff in order to consume the salvage um but there's they're making way more than is the demand so you're seeing this increased pressure on the t1 materials because you need t1 materials and or t1 ships in order to build t2 ships so now T1 ship becomes the bottleneck because the product, the T2 ships, end up not being needed as much as they're being as as much as they're able to be produced. Ekaterso, what's that under? I can't seem to find it. It's a heavy assault cruiser. Oh, what the heck. Okay, so that's under cruisers. Are they under advanced or precursor? They'd be advanced. They're they're a heavy assault cruiser. Uh, okay. Eh, I don't see it under advanced on this chart, so maybe this is limited. Do you not see heavy assault cruiser, or do you, are you only showing available? Well, I'm not in a station. I'm in a website that mimics the market, and it's uh, called Eve Marketer. Yeah. But I'll check it out. Uh, if I can fire up the game, I'll, I'll check it out. But it, it's interesting. Uh, but just so, just so I know, you, you actually go to the hack or the... Uh, heavy assault cruiser under cruisers, and that's where you can find the precursor Triglavian um, stuff. Yeah, yeah. The Akitrus is down to four fourteen. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, it was already starting to fall, but like the last price that I was selling things at was four twenty, uh, partially because it's funny, and uh, but my but my usual deal was is that I went with sale and then I would knock off five to ten. So that implies to me that it was around four thirty when uh, I last paid attention, and now it's at four fourteen. And you can see on the market 
there is a, a dip down that corresponds with approximately, um, well, I mean, what you'd expect, which is about two to three days after the salvage starts to be significantly more available. Hmm. All right. Because it takes about two days to produce an Nikki Terso once you have all of the pieces, including the VEDMAC. And the VEDMAC only takes like an hour or something like that. I don't remember. It's something very small. Okay. Let's, uh, let's move on here to some actual uh, player news from Nullsex. It looks like, I don't know how long ago this was, uh, Avatar from Goonswarm went down. And... Let's see what's involved in that. So I want to click on this kill mail and look at related tab here. And this shows you if it was a big fight or if it went down. Well, it looks like it was taken out by Low Sec Shepin. Low Sec Naya Shulpan. Shulpan is um, a Russian group. And that translates from Russian to uh, dirty kids of Low Sec or kind of like street kids of Low Sec. And those guys are known for I think this is probably Iridia let's see where it got killed yep Iridia because they're known for hanging out in Iridia as a choke point and uh, taking out anything that tries to travel through Iridia from the south and and at one point right after Phoebe hit and there were jump changes and all the jump distances came down to five light years it was impossible to get uh, from the south to the north without going through Iridia. And that was when um, that was when they had a real heyday. They, was, they were really killing a lot of stuff uh, going up and down. We actually, NC Dot baited uh, Lasekni and killed two of their Nixes. I think uh, uh, a third and fourth got away. And that was a good video. If you, you could see how that worked out. Uh, we had some wormholers who were working with us, Hacks, at the time, the Hacks Corporation, and I think one of them had been killed before by Lasechnia, so uh, we had set up um, so, uh, a bait trap, let it spring. Uh, Lasechnia came, showed up, and tackled, uh, I think it was a Titan, and then they got, then they, their Nexus got jumped by NC Dot. What's interesting about them, or anything, there's a lot interesting about them, but one of my favorite things about them is every time they would kill something, they would take a selfie with it. <laughs> so you see this wreckage, and you'd see all these ships kind of hanging out around it. Like they didn't have a care in the world, they just killed like a titan, and they're just sitting around it, and they're taking pictures of the, of, uh, <laughs> of the wreckage. Those guys were funny. So I'm glad to see they're still active, uh, and they just plucked out um, what looks like a traveling um, let's look at that fit. It's probably a traveling ship. Well, I guess there's no traveling ships anymore. I don't know. Nope, this one was fit for combat. So, unlucky. Anyway, um, Delana, thank you very much for the subscription. That's great. Come join us if you can. I don't know. It's early in the morning for some people that can't make it, but if you can, you're welcome to come on this. All right. Uh, the big news, I think, is that uh, there's questions about fraternity. We're still waiting to find out if fraternity's uh, state of the alliance happened. We're trying to find out what, what they said to the English speakers. And because, of course, half of them uh, are Chinese. So they probably already had some message go out. I was looking at, there's some confusion. I think Vili put out some information about uh, fraternity moving to a different region away from theirs. So we'll have to see what what happens. Um, if that's true or if that is a limited move, not everybody, how Winter Coalition will uh, adjust if that is true. So all that is up in the air. We'll try to figure out what's going on there. But uh, I did ask Naros if the war was over and he said, let me look it up. No. So something's still going on. And that's what's going on in the south. In the north, NC continues to pummel Sort Dragon's dead coalition. Darkness apparently isn't really that active right now. It's, um, I shouldn't say they're not active. They're just small, reduced in size and influence, although they still lead the coalition. The actual groups that are attacked, that, that are holding up dead coalition uh, are Chinese and Russian groups. Uh, Sword Dragon has long-standing good ties with 
Russian players, and so that's not surprising. I think the Chinese group is called uh, Ranger Regiment, and I forget the Russian group's name. I'll look it up. So yeah, so that's what's going on in the war zones. Um, and then there was this new thing that came out today. Let's have a look. Ugh. Why is this so hard to use Reddit? I blame you. All right, so if we sort by the top today, we'll see what pops up. Yeah, and this one here was Army of... The Army of Mango is a group affiliated with Test and Legacy Coalition, right? I should say Legacy Coalition or Test. Test is the alliance that runs Legacy Coalition. They're the powerhouse behind it. Um, but Legacy Coalition also has Brave and other groups that are aligned. Well, those groups, um, or Legacy, also allied with Army of Mango. This is a Chinese group that is from the Serenity server. And so it looks like... Um, and this is all, uh, you know, unsubstantiated because I, I can't translate Chinese, but somebody did translate it and they said it was the Chinese biggest bot and RMT trade group, um, uh, AOM Alliance bought nearly 2,000 billion, which is 2 trillion, uh, only from them and other stuff. So this guy's confessing that he sold AOM Billions and billions, uh, I don't know, ISK, I suppose. And so who knows if that's from money. I mean, uh, in other words, I think, I think what they're saying is that these guys who have real money uh, paid for 200 billion, sorry, 2,000 billion, in other words, 2 trillion in ISK, and uh, are using that money in order to play EVE Online. And so who knows? Who knows what that means, but I, I was looking at the reaction and it was stuff like, uh, stuff like this makes me want to quit. Yeah, things like this makes me want to quit the game, myself included. And then and this other guy here says, I just let all my accounts unsub except for my main. <laughs> so fight is over, the things money can't buy. Sovereignty control. Okay, so... There just seems to be some comments about like this, this botting and selling of ISK is, is driving me from the game. And I was thinking, poor CCP, they're kind of stuck between a hard place and a rock. Because on the one hand, when they try to clamp down on botting, people are like, you're clamping down on my gameplay. I'm out of here. I quit. I've let all my stuff go inactive. And then if they don't clamp down on botting, uh, on the other side of it, people are like, I'm out of here. I quit. <laughs> You know, you can't win. Uh, I'm I'm playing around with the issue that's actually probably a serious issue for some people, um, but I do think it's kind of funny how on both ends of the whole botting thing uh, goes. Uh, and people will say, it, you know, that darkness, darkness, blackout, uh, the people that quit weren't botters, and that's true. Um, but those were people that were affected by the botting, uh, the things that were happening in order, I think, to stop botting. I don't know. It's kind of interesting. Thank you, Nick's bomb. Nick Bison says hello. TIS best Twitch ever. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we made some announcements, so if you can go back to the beginning of the program, we're gonna try to do more stuff for you guys. Although we're trying to, although it's hard to um, spin people up and get them going. Oh, look, it's uh, Brave, September 19th. This is not a Soda Painful edition. Okay. That is going to be, I think, Dunk Dinkle. Let's see what he has to say. Hello, I'm Dunk Dinkle, and this is not a Soda. Had it been a State of the Alliance address, the State of Brave would be strong. So, let's get into the news. All right, first of all, the war. Um, once again, we proved that we are world champions of EVE. World champions. Winter Coalition is in retreat. 
There's still a ton of work to do. There's structures, there's fights, there's a lot going on. Get in fleet, but uh, definitely the tide is turning in our direction and all the hard work is paying off. So uh, I just want to say for a moment that uh, on each side of the, uh, of the battle, the war, there have been a lot of hard efforts put in, a lot of perseverance, a lot of uh, good fights have come from it. So kudos to everyone on both sides involved in the war. This is what Eve should be about, about good fights and having fun. And uh, this is six months of grinding. So uh, here's to everyone involved in the war uh, so far. Cheers. Uh, all right, let's talk about some brave stuff. Uh, yesterday was Pirate Day. Pirate Day was a lot of fun. Some expensive stuff got blown up, but I don't think we intended to get blown up, but it got blown up anyways. So thank you for embracing the spirit. Everyone had fun. Other groups from Legacy joined in. It was a good time. We hope to do more events. Pirate Day uh, being an expensive thing usually happens only once a year, but it was good times for everyone. Cheers for that. Next big thing that's going on is uh, Brave Empire. This is our new high sec group that we've created. Um, we're trying to get a different take on recruiting. It's a different approach to bring people into uh, Brave without having the, them having come immediately to NullSec and also not being eligible for war decks. So Katala Mist is heading that up and uh, she's been doing a great job. Things are still getting set up there. If you're interested, it's in the Slack. It'll be on the wiki and there'll be all kinds of information if you want to put a character into that. There should be some good times up there in Brave Empire. Um, we're still working out the basics with standings, so please don't take your Brave Empire tune into NullSec, into Legacy Space, until we've got all that sorted out and you've been given the green light to do that. Uh, there could be some unfortunate incidents with standings uh, going forward. Um, speaking of bringing people into Brave, it's important to uh, think about recruiting. Uh, Blackout did take a toll on Brave. Um, we're stretched thin. We lost a good percentage of people in Blackout. We're hoping they all come back. But realistically, depending on how you count it, we're about 20% down from where we were before Blackout started. So I hope a lot of people come back, um, but that's not a sure thing. And uh, what each of you can do is try and recruit people into Brave to come join up, come fly with us. Uh, we need to bulk up our numbers a little bit. There's sometimes we're just too thin stretched out across four regions with the war, uh, the mining and ratting, and then in catches, we're kind of holding that whole thing together. So remember that people are the things that make up Brave, not the ships. So uh, do your best to recruit. Okay, um, we'll get into the spicy stuff next. Now, um, you may ask, Dunk, why are you wearing these gloves? Dunk, what's with the gloves? Good question. Uh, so uh, because it's super spicy, uh, I'm going to have this Pakwi one chip challenge. With well, we'll uh, go ahead and stop there because uh, I think the, ne the next part of it is pure entertainment. I think uh, it's interesting, 20% drop from Brave coincides with... Uh, and Amin had said that they lost about 20% in Goon Swarm. Uh, so I think it's about 20% from these um, NullSec areas and stuff. And they have not come back, apparently. And, of course, what we heard was it's going to take time for them to come back. Which is like, okay. I mean, they left because of chaos. Chaos is gone. But I guess their feelings are hurt and it's going to take a while to come back. Or I don't quite understand, Astrothi, do you? I am not here right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, so anyway, that was, um, that's interesting. I think, that, you know, uh, Billy had said, he said that's going to take, or somebody had said that it's going to take a while for them to come back. Uh, and I, I don't understand that. But I guess so. Um, I don't understand why they wouldn't come back when the game had resumed the way that it was before. Maybe they want to see how the Sino changes work or something. I don't know. Um, but I, it begs the question, like, were these guys dead already and not know it? You know, were they, were they kind of on their last legs playing EVE Online because now they were 
they were doing the high end stuff that suppress, you know, that uh, essentially got suppressed. Yeah. I think the habit is a big deal, right? There's the habit of Eve online. You got to play it, check in with it. All that stuff counts. And if you break that habit, you realize like, Hey, life's kind of good without having to check in on whatever it is I'm checking in on all the time. Could be Eve online. It could be anything could be professional wrestling for all I know could be your baseball stats could be anything when you walk away from something you break the habit then that's part of that so we'll see yeah also there's a certain amount of it where it's like a lack of faith right like they they may feel shaken they may they may want to wait and see because they're not convinced that CCP is, you know, the next step is not going to just make it worse again or something. Um, so it's a wait and see. Well, if they're saying yet, then that implies that given a, a well, they didn't say that. They, they just haven't come back. Oh, yeah. The leaders are saying it's going to take a while for people to come back. Well, t- um, again, take a while implies that there's a unit of time. That, that time is a is a factor for it. Yeah. So I assume that that would be that that people are trepidatious about c- putting commitment into something now that they feel like they've been burned by it. Yeah. I guess they would have to be courted back with some something that uh, interests them, right? But it, it just it's interesting because the the amount of pressure is. Stop that CCP. People are leaving. If you don't turn back now, uh, you're not going to have a game much longer because you'll fall under a certain amount of people. Uh, And if CCP did, and I'm not saying they did, I'm not saying they did because there was definitely, it was indicated from Hilmar, it was always meant to be temporary. And I think it went on for two months, which is a pretty good amount of time to get data that they wanted and then to stop it. But the narrative was that people are leaving. I got to go. Stop. Oh, thanks for stopping by. See you later. Yep. All right. Bye. All right. And if that was the if that was what was being said to CCP through the CSM, and CCP turned around and stopped it, um, it it's like, uh, well, those people already left. You're not going to get those people back. So I I just don't think that CCP thinks in terms of oh my gosh, people are leaving. We got to stop this right now. Anymore. I think they did. They used to because they were standing by themselves uh, and they were literally uh, they were literally living and dying by their player base. And so they're very much held uh, held. um, I don't know. Ransom is the right word, but they were very much subject to people leaving the game. And now I don't think that they are anymore because I think the nature of EVE Online has changed to more of a. Uh, it's a different kind of game now than it was in 2011. The game, it's not really a video game as much anymore. I think it's much more of um, a virtual world simulator with uh, lots of people who who are interested in what EVE Online offers, which is a very difficult game that's social, um, but also there's a number of different things to do and to master, and there is PvP just about everywhere. Uh, so you have to you have to in some ways whether you know it or not engage with other people and it's uh, it's become it's become a bit of a laboratory on what works and what doesn't work and i think that is really interesting because it changed when uh, pearl abyss bought ccp and there's all of a sudden it becomes a different need for ccp to exist at first it existed for its players it was a company that had players and needed to get money from players in order to keep existing and the strategy was to create a second eve through world of darkness or create a technology they could sell to other game companies because ccp was known as innovators right they they made plex and even blizzard copied plex that's a big company so that was an initial strategy but once the investment into VR kind of ran out and they were basically saying, you know, we want our money back or whatever. I don't know if they were saying that, but that's kind of the amount of pressure that was happening. Because you see layoffs, right? When you have these investors, you see layoffs when the investors appear to want their money out or or want to see certain results. And, and there's a lot of instability with investors. And that's what CCP was living on for the first 
12, 15 years. Um, one of those rounds was 2011. They laid off a hundred people. And then more recently when they wiped out the community team, that was a round of layoffs. And that was basically the VR investment people, um, needed to be satisfied in some way. So you either show good management by lowering your costs or you show good growth potential by showing a good plan and where you're going. And then you want to see some validation of that through statistics of sales and, or potential sales, I suppose. But when PA buys CCP, everything changes. The model is no longer find investors into this old game. It is, it is, a, it is two groups of like minds, two MMO companies, uh, and one buys, one big one buys the smaller one, and I think says, experiment, and we'll give you some of the better formulas that we have, and then you innovate, and you give us some of the same formulas. Because I don't think they bought CCP. I think they bought Hilmar and maybe some of the creative staff that's there. I don't know exactly who, but the performance indicators really show me that PA is interested in what Hilmar brings to the table and they're interested in uh, the relationships that CCP has and some of the international business they can get into because of CCP, which is the Chinese um, mobile market. But if you look at it, the way the deal is structured, it's like $200 billion paid for CCP. And that's a lot. They make 50 billion a year. So 20 billion is, you know, four year commitment. And then you have 225 billion that is uh, incentives. So that's, in, that's put there in order to keep people around, right? You meet those marks, you have the potential to double your money. Otherwise, you would sell and say, I'm going to go do something else, or I'm going to go and uh, relax. By the way, that is 50 million, not billion, 50 million. If I said billion, that was wrong. I'm talking in Eve terms if I said that. Yeah, it's 50 million that CCP makes uh, per year. And and that's CCP. That's not EVE Online. I think EVE Online is a big part of that, the majority part of that. Uh, and... Um, um, but PA, Pearl Abyss, does make $1 billion per year. So they do make a billion. They make uh, um, a lot more than CCP. So they're a much bigger company. And so the, the point of it is, and by the way, Pearl Abyss makes most of that money through their mobile game of uh, Black Desert Online, I believe. That's something I've been told. I haven't looked it up. If that's true, they're very interested in the mobile market. And as Hilmar says, um, Asia or Korea specifically is way ahead of the Western part of the world in adopting complicated uh, handheld video games, uh, like stuff that you would play on your phone. And then you see EVE Online Echoes being developed. So I think um, the performance of EVE Echoes is really important to Pearl Abyss to see how that works and see if that has traction. And you can see there's a market for it. There's already a lot of people talking about this uh, space, space something too. I forget what it's called. That's a basically a mobile version of Eve Online, if you look at it, with heavy, heavy rails on it, which means uh, you don't really have decisions to make until you get through a certain portion. And so that must be just part of the new player experience for mobile games. It has to be really, really constrained. Um, but yeah, Eve Echoes is coming soon and hopefully this space game didn't take that's it second galaxy or something like that I, I forget what it was but hopefully second galaxy doesn't take a big bite out of eve echo's potential and that's going to depend on a lot of things but but it, it may very well depend on um what kind of adoption eve players eve online players the desktop version have for uh eve echo it, it may i don't know that's the built-in audience right so that's who you you hope uh will approve and buy your uh, by access to your video game. So all that to say, the, the way the deal was set up by PA was to give incentives for people to stick around that were working EVE Online. Now, I think, and they've said as much, there's cross-pollination between ideas between Pearl Abyss and CCP. So they're feeding each other information on what works and what doesn't work, and they're going to continue to do that for a while. So... Um, this is all very interesting. And actually, Ashtarothi, uh, glad you came back. You know a lot about this kind of thing, don't you? Yeah. What do you uh, know? I've, done a lot, I've done a lot of market research into, uh, or I, I look at all the 
stuff from GDC and stuff about the market and all that. What uh, is know. GDC, real quick? Uh, the Game Developers Conference. It's mm-hmm. it's where game developers go and talk to other game developers about game development. Mm-hmm. So um, either way, uh, basically, the game develop the game industry is in a bit of a crisis at the moment. Um, you know, the AAA industry is seeing increasing costs with uh, decreasing revenue and increasing demands from the player base. The indie market has become so oversaturated that 80% of the games put on Steam uh, do not make enough money in its lifetime to support a game in- a game company for a month, let alone its entire development cycle. So, you know, there's there's a lot of problems. And so what ends up happening is, is that we live in what's now called the attention economy. And the average adult... Um, with an expendable income, has roughly one hour of free time a day on average that they can choose to entertain themselves. And so that's your video game time. That's your, um, that's your video game time. That's your movie time. That's your hanging out with your family time. That's your reading a book time, whatever it is, right? And so you're competing with all these different things. But the average consumer or the average American whatever uh, is on their phone on average four hours a day. And this is not like doing something important. We're talking about playing on games or scrolling through their Facebook or just idling, right? <laughs> That's important to some people, <laughs> but yeah. So if you can capture somebody while they are uh, during that time, then you're basically four times as likely and competing with less people uh in the mobile scene. So you're seeing a lot of companies, not just Eve, but look at, um, you know, the Diablo debacle yeah. and other things like that. You're seeing AAA companies make legitimate forays into the mobile market. Now, will they fall into the same kind of marketing strategies? They don't have to necessarily, um, but they're going to have to solve the problem with the fact that people are simply unwilling to pay for a $60 mobile game. So you got, you're going to have to monetize it somehow. Yeah. It's going to be an interesting challenge, well, but we'll I, see how it works out. I think at least for, as we, for us, as we get older, we realize that just the sedentary lifestyle is a killer. You need to be up and around, even if, and so every time you get out of your chair, it's an instance where you break the immersion. You might escape Eve online, but if, uh, if you're walking around, and uh, or at a doctor's office or sitting in some place where you have time to be distracted, even at a party. <laughs> Yesterday I was at a party and there was like five guys watching football. Four out of the five are looking at their phones. So even in those situations that are social, that you're around a TV anyway, you're still looking at your personal device. Those are moments where you can check in on things and be attached to it. So it, it makes a lot of sense to try to occupy that time as opposed to the sedentary lifestyle of sitting at your desk where you can do nothing but video games. Well, it's interesting that you, you bring that up too, because there's another thing in game marketing, because you, game marketing isn't really like traditional marketing in a lot of ways. You don't see a lot of commercials in the classic sense. Um, but what they have is what's called over the sh- shoulder value, right? Mm-hmm. So, can somebody glance over the shoulder of you playing the game and get it enough to be interested in it, right? Mm. So if you have this visually stunning spaceship game and they are on their phone and somebody comes over at the party and they're in the back and they go, hey, what are you playing? Whoa, that doesn't look like any game I've ever seen on a mobile, uh, on a phone. What is that? Oh, that's Eve Echoes. It's this. Uh, so, like, you know that Eve game from the video, you know, with all those weird people with spreadsheets. Well, they made like a mobile version, and it's pretty good. Oh, I should check that out. Boom. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And those opportunities are much more presented, or pre- you'll, they're much more common in real life because you're out of your house a lot of that time. Like nobody's coming over to your house to sit behind you to watch Eve online unless that's what they came to do. It's not something you're going to stumble into. And uh, for people like me that are 
um, that have people over every once in a while, if I fire up EVE Online, that's instant wife aggro. So that's not going to happen that way. So yeah, it's it's very interesting that the the mobile market offers a lot of potential for new players that uh, EVE Online doesn't. Hey, Delana. Hi, Teddy. How are you guys? Hey. Good to see you. We need to talk about merchandise. We'll get to that later on uh, off, off air. Uh, okay. It would be great if you could help with that. How are you doing? Oh, good. Just a typical that, Monday. I'm going to bow out myself. I'm sorry. All right, How dude. See you. Bye. Bye. Talana is somebody that's new on Talking in Station, so you'll be seeing more of her. Maybe we'll get her out on the show since she has some streaming experience. Yeah, that would be fun. Yeah, so you, you play with Horde, right? Yes, I do. Yeah, and uh, you're going to be at E Vegas. Oh, <laughs> definitely, yes. Right. Uh, so if you guys want to meet, uh, you guys can. If you're going to E Vegas, look for Delana out there somewhere. Do you hang I'll out? I probably have my Horde flag, so I'll be very, <laughs> uh, very up. That was what I was going to ask. Do you have like a, an entourage of Hordelings that? Uh, walk around with you. Do you guys travel uh, in usually, packs? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> little little wolf pack. Yeah, Gobbins invited me to your barbecue, so I'm gonna make it. Oh, uh, you should. It's gonna be so much fun. Yeah, we'll we'll uh, we'll say hello to everyone there. Well, cool. And uh, Teddy, you're here with us. Hello. Hey, how's it going? Oh, Apollo jumped in too. Let's see if his uh, his. Uh, mobile device lets us lets him stick around. Let's go, Apollo. What's up, man? Oof, you're low. I don't think, I don't think... I'm on my phone. I'm sorry. That's all right. All right. Um, so Teddy, you were on Talking in Stations last night. They had the whole story one day early. That was last night. It'll be re, re uh, streamed today. That was last night, right? Yeah, it was uh, just going over like recruitment and wormhole branding, that sort of thing. Yeah. I heard that one question, I was at a party, so I had to like kind of dip in and out. But I heard one question was, have you seen many NullSec people come to wormhole space? I was wondering that same question. Um, I've noticed a few. The other corps haven't really. Uh, they noticed but people I, coming I think back? I think it's more like um, hunters that came back to hunt in Nullsec mm -hmm. with no local. And then they still crave that bit of small gang. So they were like, oh, well, let's just go back to one more spot. Yeah. Because that's where, that's where that's at, I guess. Yeah, it's just a good place to get, to just get some, like, some good small gang content. And obviously you've got like no uh you've got no local so yeah well anything new to report out there in your neck of the woods nothing it's all quiet where are you delana um uh, nothing particularly big that i know of yeah are you involved in, um, are you on deployment in any way, either down south to help out uh, Winter Coalition or up north to help out uh, NC Dot go after a dead coalition? Um, not really that I'm aware of. So probably just SIGs that are doing things. Yeah, I know we scaled back a little bit. Apollo, I'd love to ask you a question, but I don't know if I can hear you through the... Is there anything new out there with you? Uh, no, not really. Everything's pretty much the same. <laughs> Why'd you ask me to ask? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Because I didn't want you to feel like you could. All right, good. All right, so we've checked in with the uh, with parts of the game that that we can check off our list. Thanks. All right, well, uh, there's uh, not much else to report. I, we'll save some stuff for tomorrow. I did want to say at the very end of the program that we have uh, a different video that I want to show you. I'm not going to show you the whole video because it's 30 minutes long, but I, I thought it was very original and uh, unusual. 
and this didn't have a lot of people watching it, so I wanted to make sure that, that have gone down in the game. Oops. As well as so we'll start that at the beginning. I'll take the commercials out, and this is from uh, the dumb the dumb goofs, I guess. Well, when I saw it, it had less than a few hundred uh, views, and now it's got twelve hundred. So where it is getting out, and this is a really cool video. You want to check it out. He even does his own graphics at the beginning that uh, looks like Lego 3D stuff. Um, so again, that is T H A, the dumb goose, two words combined. So T H A D U M B G O O S E. Uh, and he only has like 3,000 subscribers. So for what he did, I think uh, he should have more subscribers and he should definitely have more views on this. We'll play some of it. And oh, here's uh, Seraph Patty Kane. Seraph, how you doing? Too bad yourself, sir. Good. Anything new, or can you get us up to speed on what's going on in your area? If there's nothing to report. Um, it obviously, as everyone knows, there was a big push yesterday into Detroit. Um, lots of oil hubs fell. Uh, 16 out of 20, I believe. Uh, a couple of key ones fell as well. So ITAC 9, SAI. So we've sort of got quite a lot of control now over the western side of that the western yeah western side of detroit so that's where that leaves fraternity who knows okay that's 16 out of 20 i hubs that you guys reinforced when you didn't take out the keep star that's what you ended up doing as a backup plan correct so when we saw they had their supers and titans that sort of stage defensively on the keep star we sort of went okay we'll do everything else then uh, proceeded to reinforce 20 iHubs and yesterday they came out of reinforcement over a period of about 10 hours and we took 16. Ah, so that was a valuable move then. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been a big wake-up call and there's been a couple of pings thrown Norris about things that are going on. Um, a couple of smaller entities have been evacuating assets out of Detroit, so it's yeah, what's the what's the deal with um, fraternity? Supposedly is going to move into a different space. Are they retreating, or did, is there some kind of a deal where they can have free passage to a different area? No deal that I'm aware of. Um, obviously, people are aware. Vili reached out to a lot of the smaller sub alliances of Winter Coalition and basically says, "Hey, you know, what do you want to do? What are you doing? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera." If you want to leave, you want to leave. We'll help you with that. If you don't want to leave, you want to die with fraternity. Hey, we'll help with that as well. Um, some people have taken us up in the offers. Other people. Oh, so you actually got some people said we'd like to let you know that we in, we would like to stay in our space, even though we're uh, allied with uh, Winter. Um, from what I've heard, there is possibilities of that happening. Yeah. And I wouldn't be surprised either because a lot of these people have been living in that area now for multiple years. So mm -hmm. do you really want to up sticks and leave if you have the chance? Of yeah, it, 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 yeah, it depends. There's a lot of groups. I think when one when one nullsec entity moves in on another, a lot of times they'll contact the renting groups and say, "Do you want to do you want to keep your contract? Just pay us." I think that's what Skill you did when they knocked out uh, XIX. Or yeah, a lot of the, the entities went under the PIBC alliance at the time. Mm -hmm. All right, well, thanks for getting us up to speed with that. That's kind of what we thought. Um, we'll look into it some more and see if we can, what we can get you tomorrow. What, what we should end on, because it's time to go, is this video, if I can find it. So that's Eve explained in five minutes. That's not the one I want. This is the one that says, you should play EVE Online, or should you play EVE Online in 2019? Question mark. The most frustrating and incredible MMORPG ever. And uh, it's it's kind of a, <laughs> it's a good video. Go and find it. I'm going to go uh, put it inside of the channel so you guys can go find it on your own. It's 30 minutes. Otherwise, I'd play the whole thing. Unless you guys want me to, I could play it for the for the audio. Oops, I just put that into Discord. Hang tight for the Twitch version. Yeah, why don't we uh why don't we just play it for people who are listening to this and we will see you tomorrow.
Alright, last tutorial is finished. Undocking and approaching gate. Prepare for warp. Finally, the new bro shackles are off, and I'm ready to explore the great beyond! Warning, your ship is trapped by a warp bubble. What the hell is a- <sighs> Alright, the least we can do here is be diplomatic. Open all comm channels, please. Hey, move your giant space fart out of the way! My ship can't move! Alright, this time we are entering the Great Beyond, for real. Let's go, crew! Activating warp drive. How many escape capsules we got? Just the one, sir. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> Suckers. Oh no. Man, there is something about this freaking game that just breaks out that masochistic side of me and says, Come back, daddy. I've played this game on and off since 2013, and the last time I returned was in 2017. It was my delusional goal, yet again, to become a PvP master of EVE. And for the third time, it fell flat. And once again, the EVE player base made me know what it feels like to drop the soup. So I left again for the third time. But here's what happened this time, why I started up again. I've been watching this epic show called The Expanse. If you haven't watched that show, you're missing out, man. It is sci-fi gold, and there aren't many sci-fi shows that have really pulled me in, but this got me good. So, after binge-watching that show over the course of, like, a week, my sci-fi itch was real. And what better sci-fi game to play than EVE, a game that is the definition of freedom? For this sad-ass fourth attempt at the game, I decided I'd try to treat my experience in more of a role-play-ish way. So instead of focusing on becoming this titan of player-killing like every other time, I'd imagine I'm literally living a capsuleer captain's life, just starting from scratch with my crew and taking obstacles as they come. I made a promise to remind myself regularly that it's all about the journey, and I'm writing my captain's legacy over time. So yeah, that shit didn't work. <laughs> Within an hour of getting in game, I've got like 40 internet tabs open all along the lines of best PvP ship fittings, and I'm kicking off an hour long YouTube tutorial on how to use this very specific Keldari frigate. So I knew how to go slam some ass in PvP, followed by immediately going to PvP heavy systems as if it would play out differently than every other time I've tried PvP. And guess what? It didn't play out differently than every other time I tried PvP. What the fuck, is? Okay, why am I blaming myself for this? This is what you do to me. Eve, you big hoe! That, right there, ladies and gentlemen, was a meltdown. <laughs> but regardless of my abomination of a track record in this game, I decided it was time to make a video on EVE and how I feel about the game that I've been playing on and off since 2013. Now I want to emphasize everything I say is just my opinion, and this impressions video is more to give new players an idea of what the game is, and shine a light on things that might be the deciding factor between them choosing to play or not, and maybe have a few laughs and good times along the way. Of course, regardless of what I say, I always I always recommend the player tries the game themselves, because nothing beats the experience you'll get trying it firsthand. Anyone who's experienced with the game though, please feel free to correct me in the comments for errors. In all my MMO's impressions videos, I give you my pros, cons, neutrals, and lastly the final verdict. But before we get into all that, we have a section called The Breakdown, which provides a quick summary of what the game is, my experience with the game, like time played, things accomplished, that sort of thing, as well as the pricing model. Let's break it down! What is it? EVE is a sci-fi sandbox MMORPG that has a universe with over 7,500 visitable star systems, yet somehow I still can't find a safe place to hide in this bitch. My death feed is what you see next to depressing in the dictionary. EVE's sandbox nature means it provides freedom that I haven't seen in other sandbox MMOs, because all of its systems are very fleshed out and support any type of lifestyle you want for your pilot. Be literally whatever you want to be, whether it be a hauler, miner, manufacturer, industry mogul, player killing pirate, or a bounty hunter that tries to kill those pirates or whoever else has a fat bounty on them, an explorer, a faction warfare pilot, and so on. Never have I seen a game that places a game world down for players and truly lets them control the world like EVE does. But with player freedom comes constant risk, as some players choose to hunt and kill other players, so the stakes while playing EVE always feel high. But the excitement that this creates, as well as the limitless potential, will keep you coming back. PvP is a huge part of the game, and it is packed with depth and complexity, and the PvE gameplay clearly wasn't as big a focus from an engagement standpoint, as tasks can get quite repetitive. But nonetheless, there are tons of avenues of PvE you can pursue to make a great living in the universe of 
New Eden. Whether your focus is on PvP or PvE or other forms of player interaction, there are so, so, so many options for the player to live the space life they want to. My experience with the game. Aside from getting fucked, <laughs> I joke, but not really. I've spent about 350 hours playing this game. My Steam account is a lying sack of shit because even just leaving the launcher running counts as game time. But yeah, I estimate about 350 hours. This is probably the only MMO I've played for this long where I still feel like a complete noob. I went freaking AFK for 10 seconds to put a freaking pizza pop in the microwave. And the worst part is I'm getting killed for a pizza pop that's not even name brand. Oh, this sucks. Oh, shit. This is not good timing. Yup. Hey, baby. Yeah, babe, listen, I'm not in a good mood right now. My ship's getting blown up in Eve. Okay, I don't know what that means. Are you, like, almost here? You're supposed to be there at five. Yes. In that time, I've always been a subscriber, or I guess we're called Omega players now, because it allows me access to everything in the game, not just, like, 25% of the fun that the free version offers. I have about 12.5 million skill points on my character, primarily in combat skills, though if you find me in space, you wouldn't be able to tell as my immediate response to seeing an enemy ship is to lock up and experience seizure-like symptoms, IRL. I've spent my time in-game trying out mining, all sorts of PvP, like faction warfare, low-sec small gang hunting, or PvP in big fleets, exploration, PvE mission running, and so on. The pricing model. EVE is free to play with limitations, and offers a monthly subscription of 15 US dollars to access all parts of the game. Free to play, in my opinion, gives you a taste of the game, but holds you back from so much of it, so if you get into EVE, I'd recommend upgrading to the subscription model. You can take part in PvP fleets and fly some ships with fittings that'll make you competent at PvP, but to level up a lot of skills to get that better equipment as well as use it, the subscription is needed. I'd recommend playing the game as a free player the first couple weeks and getting in on some PvE or PvP action to figure out if you can enjoy the game, because it is very different from any other game I've played, before buying your subscription. To make you feel a bit better, once you start making fat stacks of ISK, which is the in-game currency, you can start paying with that currency to buy game time. So I'd recommend finding an avenue that you want to pursue for money making close to right off the bat, so you can prioritize your skill training on that stuff. Alright, we're at the pros. Number one. EVE can produce some of the most adrenaline-pumping moments ever, and while there is a lot of downtime between these moments, they easily provide enough excitement that I can justify logging on every day to experience feeling that again. Now, I'm a horrible pilot, one of the worst, it is what it is. After playing this game, I now understand how my friend, who has a 0.3 kill-death ratio in COD, feels when I force him to play COD. He'd storm off and I'd be like, you're such a butt pussy, bro. Dude, no more, I totally get it. But here's the thing, every single encounter you have with a player goes down differently. Different ships, different fittings, different place, everything is different. So what EVE is great at is exposing you to so many unique scenarios that you're thinking to yourself, as your dead carcass flows through space, what if the next scenario is the one where things click for me, or I have the right setup and I win? You guys, I am so bad at this game and I can't stop logging in every day. Please do not look up my kill death stats unless you had like a horrible day and need a good laugh, then I'm happy to be of service, and most of those were gate camps, okay? You guys, the feeling of being in a late night fleet, a squad of people who have committed to peeing out nothing but Red Bull and staying up late together, grinding the grind and murdering our enemies, there's no feeling like it. One of the most notable fights I experienced upon returning, just the other day actually, my boys and I finally find pilots that aren't being gigantic puss boys and just cannon mousing us all night, so we lock and load, and enter an FW site, Faction Warfare, and soon enough we have a raging battle going with a Vexor Navy issue, Scythe Fleet issue, and an Ishtar. I lost my ship, but holy shit, that was some real shit. The voice comms were going wild, with celebrations at the overall victory. I realized I got the killing blow on the Scythe, my macho man instincts kicked in hard. I was like, obviously I got that kill, I'm surprised I didn't final blow all three. Don't take that out of context. So I clicked on the kill report with confidence, eager to see how big of a role I played in this kill. And we see right here, Poppy Goose did 5% damage? <laughs> yeah. 
Because of how hard of a game EVE is to learn and get a handle on, every single time I succeeded or even just fought and did well but still died in PvP, whether it be with the fleet or on my own, it felt so rewarding. Like, slowly but surely, I was getting better towards what I wanted to get better in, despite the outcome. And the outcome is I probably died, but still, how many games have you played where you've died probably three times as many times as you've gotten kills or even assists, and you still keep coming back? Shit, if this was any other game, I would've quit long ago with my rage being as bad as it is, but EVE just entices me. It's a game that does a great job of keeping your expectations in check, reminding you that it'll never be a game of instant gratification, but the satisfying moments will come over time because you've put the effort in and earned it. Now I gotta talk for a second about how in-depth this game is. Every single damn thing in this game is so fleshed out, so detail-rich, and that's what probably drives players away as much as it keeps them. There is so much to learn in EVE Online, and once you get the ball rolling on your desired path, it'll be because you probably had to ask a lot of questions or watch a tutorial or two. I'll talk about combat specifically here, but this depth really applies to all aspects of EVE. So for combat, there are hundreds of types of weapons to equip on your ship, different warp drives, afterburners, shield and armor enhancers, and we can't forget about the drones, those cute little things that float around your ship that brutally kill your enemies and send their cold carcasses floating through space if you use them right. But they float around your ship like they're harmless and it's super cute. I just named a fair bit of equipment right there for your ship, all of which has its own variations, like up to a dozen variations in some cases, but guess what? These items are just a tiny amount out of the plethora of items you can equip on your ship. Don't even get me started on how many ships there are, but now that I have started, there are over 300 of them, all of which have completely... All right, we're going to cut this it. video short because it goes on for 30 minutes. We've only heard one third of it, uh, but I want to thank you guys for coming around. Check out that video. It's in the links. We'll put it into the... There are no show notes for these programs. We do them too quickly, but we'll, you know, do what we can. Um, and I want to thank Delana for stopping by along with Ashtarothy. And uh, we will see you guys tomorrow. But before you take off, we're going to raid Suetonia. So hang around. So I think this episode is was called uh, PA and CCP because we talked a lot about the deal. And uh, the reason that was important was because if you if you think of it in those terms that we were talking about earlier today, then you can see that a lot of the stuff that's said about CCP lately just makes no sense, I think. All right, guys, take care. We'll see you tomorrow.